morning friends let us discuss the excitation contraction coupling okay excitation contraction coupling just see this is the nerve ending and this is the skeletal muscle this is the neuromuscular junction we have already discussed that now this is the skeletal muscle membrane okay action potential goes there and that action potential will be transmitted to the muscle also now this muscle when this action potential is generated in the muscle the muscle contracts okay just see if i give one action potential to the skeletal muscle this is the skeletal muscle and i am giving a single action potential to it will this contract yes it will contract how it will contract it will contract like this twitch one twitch one action potential given to the muscle will lead to one twitch one contraction followed by one relaxation if i give the sequence of action potentials then you will get continuous state of contraction which is known as tetanus so my question is how the action potential given to the muscle will lead to contraction so this contraction is because of calcium action potential is followed by sudden increase and sudden decrease in intracellular calcium which is responsible for contraction followed by relaxation so first you have action potential then you have a calcium spark okay sudden increase sudden decrease in calcium which is followed by twitch so contraction is because of calcium this calcium will come from where let us try to understand that just see the skeletal muscle cell membrane will penetrate deep inside the skeletal muscle and this is known as t tubule transverse tubule okay this is the nerve ending this is the skeletal muscle here skeletal muscle cell membrane motor end plate and this is the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle it will penetrate deep inside the skeletal muscle in the form of transverse tubules t tubules okay and then in the skeletal muscle we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum and this portion of the sarcoplasmic reticulum this portion is slightly enlarged and this enlarged portion is known as cistern and there is a cistern on each side so this is transverse tubule and there are cisterns on each side this okay and this entire assembly is known as triad t triad transverse triad so just see here we have extracellular fluid here we have intracellular fluid this is inside the cell here also we have extracellular fluid t tubule is the extension of extracellular fluid and here we have the fluid which is inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum where we have a lot of calcium this okay this entire assembly is known as triad okay action potential travels on the cell membrane this will go inside the t tubule also now this will lead to the release of calcium okay the calcium huh, which will which will do the contraction so this calcium ion will be released from where from where calcium ion will come it, it will come from t tubule or cistern from here or here so just see in the t tubule we have calcium channels voltage gated calcium channel and the calcium comes from here these voltage gated calcium channels present in t tubule these are known as dihydro 
pyridine receptors. These receptors are known as dihydropyridine receptors. These are nothing but voltage gated calcium channels present in tubule, dihydropyridine receptors. But this calcium which is coming from this source is a very small amount of calcium. It is not a big calcium, this one, it is a small calcium. This is not having the sufficient power to generate the twitch. Okay, actual source of calcium is the cistern. So, until unless the calcium comes from cistern, muscle will not contract. So, there is a calcium channel in the cistern also. And this calcium channel is known as rhinodine receptor. This is rhinodine receptor. This rhinodine receptor, this calcium channel is also activated and the calcium starts coming from this source. And this is the actual source of calcium because of which the muscle contracts. This is the actual large calcium, big calcium, large amount of calcium because of which the muscle contracts. Is this okay? So very simple, not only calcium will come from tubule, calcium will also come from cistern and this calcium is actually the real calcium because of which the muscle contracts. Okay, my last question. How this rhinodine receptor is activated? This receptor, how it is activated? This is a voltage gated calcium channel. So when action potential comes, this is activated by voltage. How rhinodine receptor is activated? Who will open the gate of the rhinodine receptor? Is it a voltage gated channel? How it is activated? Or, or it's, it's calcium gated? This calcium comes from this source and that calcium will activate further calcium release. Is this rhinodine receptor, is it a calcium gated calcium channel? Or voltage gated? Or sodium gated? What do you think? Just see. This is rhinodine receptor. This is dihydropyridine receptor. Both are physically connected to each other. If you do the electron microscopy, you will find that both are physically connected to each other. Okay. So, no doubt calcium will come from here. But this calcium is useless. Because dihydropyridine and rhinodine, they are physically connected. So, rhinodine receptor is activated, so calcium comes, so muscle contracts. This is the actual calcium, <coughs> physical connection. <coughs> so, how rhinodine receptor is activated? That is activated by dihydropyridine receptor, this one, because they are physically connected. In skeletal muscle, but in heart, theory is slightly different. In case of heart, this rhinodine receptor is activated by calcium, this calcium. The small amount of calcium which is coming from this source, okay, this small amount of calcium will activate further calcium release. In case of heart, rhinodine receptor is activated by calcium. Calcium induced calcium release. Okay, so this phenomenon calcium induced calcium release. This is the phenomenon seen in heart. This is present in heart. In skeletal muscle, okay, calcium induced calcium release. This is something which is seen in heart. Is okay? In skeletal muscle, mechanical coupling. So, there is slight difference. Just try to remember this difference. Okay? You know, what may be the implication of this difference? Okay? 
just imagine that this outside calcium in the blood is less okay so this calcium will be less so this calcium will be less so heart will become weak but in skeletal muscle because this is because of the mechanical coupling here so skeletal muscle will not become weak so myocardial contractility may be sensitive to extracellular calcium not the skeletal muscle so that may be the implication of this difference this calcium is more this calcium will be more so this will be more so heart will become strong not the skeletal muscle so why uh, myocardial heart contractility is sensitive to extracellular calcium not skeletal muscle why this is the reason because in case of heart we have calcium induced calcium release okay so this is the excitation contraction coupling okay this is the excitation i am exciting this uh, skeletal muscle because of this calcium now this calcium will ultimately do the contraction is okay suppose we have some mutation here in the rhinodin receptor by which this rhinodin receptor is activated more activation of rhinodin receptor okay more calcium release when more calcium will be released what will happen muscle will not enter into spasm as such but because of that the body temperature is increased this condition is known as malignant hyperthermia malignant hyperthermia so if somebody ask you the question that in malignant hyperthermia there is the problem the problem lies in the rhinodin receptor there is some activation of the rhinodin receptor calcium leaks and because of which the body temperature is increased so this condition is known as malignant hyperthermia is okay so this is all about the excitation contraction coupling the sarcotubular system tubule along with sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcotubular system and this will help you in excitation contraction coupling this is done okay how this calcium which is released from here how this will do contraction we'll discuss it in the next video thank you very much